I have a hat. And I'm in a crypt. Crypt of the auditory. I was raised in a small house, but I was good with inside of my rough room. She cap waves to see when I was barely old enough to walk, I became a sailor and I became a new lady first. In the Atlantic first as an apprentice for carrying cargo from my father, patron Marco Polo. It was a good life. Okay, I see what I gotta do. Aha! I am smart. Oh my god, there's dead people here. I mean, this is a crypt. Ugh. One day while I was sure in the hall, I was looking for work, I fell in love. She was barely 20, but when I looked into her eyes, the whole world. Ugh. The whole world was reflected back, clearer and brighter than the sun. After that, I still went to sea, but my heart remained on, on land with a girl who had become my wife and our young son. You married your son? I'm trying to move right now, just so you guys could see the text. One afternoon that summer. Mr. Polo called me to his study. My father was already there, beside an older man dressed in a strange hooded cape, watching us. At that moment, everything about my life changed. My father told me that he was an assassin, moving his ring. Moving his ring, he showed me a strange marking on his finger, explaining that our family came from an ancient order that protected and defended mankind. He paused, and then, when I didn't speak, Mr. Polo stepped forward. He told me that the stranger in the hood would teach me, and in return, I would carry him across the Mediterranean to Spain. And so began my apprenticeship with Dante. So and so. One that would destroy every bit of happiness I would ever have. Uh, the timer. <coughs> the timer thingy. <coughs> you think I could actually swim in this? Otherwise, this wouldn't have worked. I believe <coughs> now that we have this it will open up that gate which is why we have that free running segment from earlier for avoiding Mr. such and such met with me repeatedly have fun our meetings were about purchasing supplies but soon became about higher things about life love honor and justice he taught me that society was set up in such a way to control its members to stop us from thinking 
I'm seeing. Soon I was looking to, I could look past all the laws and illusions. I understood that mankind was being used by his rulers, that we the people deserved freedom. It was then that Dante began to show me pages, sorry, pages from a book that Mr. Polo had brought back from the palace of the great Kent Khan. Genghis Khan. The manuscript, the codex, was about our order, the assassins. Barely. to make it all the way over there somehow <laughs> yeah I probably need to Now that I know exactly where I have to go. <coughs> need to find a way to get there. Ooh, made it. Alright, more lore. Our planned voyage never took place. While turning to a ravine to pick up the remainder of his belongings, Dante died. Dismayed at the loss of my mentor, I went to inform my father and Mr. Polo of the sad news. Before he could even speak, I was ushered into the study and my father his face wa white locked the door behind me. Shocked, I listened in silence as he spoke. Dante intended to take the Codex to Spain where it would be safe, but he, he was being watched. The enemy of the assassins, the Knight Templar, the enemy of the assassins, the Knights Templar still existed. I recalled the stories he had told me uh, of the Templars, and it all became clear. Dante has been murdered. The Templars knew about the cord Codex pages, and they knew about us. Shaking, my f my father told me to take the codex and leave for Spain at once while with my wife and child. Oh, wait, there's more. As Mr. Polo ushered me out the door, he handed me a small piece of paper with a number on it. With this number, I could draw on his credit more ducats than I had ever seen in my life at any bank in Italy. Oh, it's you. Get up. It's you. That missed. I'm not sure. I don't really like being timed for like random things. I 
Unless it's a speed run, in which case I'm okay. But if I'm doing things casually, then it's a no for me. Let's see what I gotta do. Also, my phone went thing. There we go. Mm. Something is happening, and I don't know what. There's like a random noise in my room. Or not in my room, but. Let's see, oh. That's gonna be the thing of this game. Just. It's just Ezio being clumsy. <coughs> Yo. <laughs> so we found out that Dante had been murdered. There we go. He set, he set sail that night. The ship filled with cargo to sell the markets at Barcelona. At first, all was well. Then, to avoid a coming storm, J <sighs> uh, we laid anchor in the Toronto Harbor. Cloaked in darkness, the pirates came. I didn't see them until they were already boarding the ship. I hid with my family in the hold. Pulling out some codex, pulling out the codex, and I ran the worn leather cover through my hands. Then I broke the spine. The pages slid silently across the floor. I scattered them into the chest boxes and containers I was carrying to the market. The band of founders were drunk. I could smell it on their breath. <laughs> when they asked for the codex, I knew who had sent them. Holding back my rage, I said that I'd thrown it overboard. They started to laugh. Two men held me down, still grinning with. While the rest cut off my wife's clothes. She begged for mercy until her voice gave out. Once they were done, they threw her into the sea. They took my cargo and sunk my ship and left me, adrift, clinging to a piece of railing. I made it to the beach with my son. My wife's body washed up on the shore the next morning with the tide. Now we have to go. Over there. <laughs> Alright, that's you. And just drop. Oh. 
Ezio! Hat is just, the hat I'm wearing is just giving me bad luck for whatever reason. Oh, Ezio! Let's go. Uh. I never saw the sea again. Making my way to Florence and rented a small room and visited the bank. I had memorized for his account number. With that, uh. with the vast. Some I now had at my disposal and went to Venice in disguise to find my father. I returned to Florence the next day, both Polo and my father were already dead. From that moment forward, I collected treaties of arch on architecture, studied the classics, and took focal lessons. I, op I adopted the name Auditore, impersonating a noble at the F Florentine court. Except there does one of their own, I took on the trappings of nobility and constructed this villa for me and my son and then I hunted them I raised my son to fight to find the codex and kill the Templars together we would regain the honor of my wife and avenge the death of my father two debt that would never that could never be repaid to the auditory that reads this remember that you are not a nobleman you are not one of the deceivers you are one of the people avenge us So, I guess there's The family crypt has been explored. And respects. Oh, it was right there. Okay. What's this? Oh, that's sanctuary. Okay. I forgot about that. Anyway, as we make our way back to, uh, As we make our way back inside of the villa, <laughs> I guess we'll end things off there. So. Next time on Assassin's Creed 2, we'll be doing, uh, 
that he has got. I'm sure I have a surprise. I'm sure I have just what you need. We'll be doing the mission that was here at the start. But, or the memory that was here, but. There we go. Buongiorno. Salute, Sir Ezio. Shall we take a look at the list? Yes, let's take a look at the list because I want. Because I want to put that in. We have 5,000 left over. And, uh, yeah. Ezio! <laughs> come in, come in. To what do we owe the honor? I'll tell you what we owe the honor to. But it's got to be next time. See you guys then.